It's time for the Nebraska Volleyball Coaches Show. Alongside head coach John Cook. Line drives it to Sky McCune. Great pass by the Gretna Dragon. Outside set. And a big block. Lindsey Crozy. Big Alec. Count in front of Keeley Davis. The Big Reds will end two. Free ball by the Libero. And the near kill until Lexi Rodriguez saved it. Unreal. Lexi Rodriguez kept it alive. It's 19-9. They're on their feet in Lincoln. Liz Grigorski, former Wisconsin Badger. Line drive serve. Good pass. Rodriguez the slide. Wow. Andy Jackson. Kaboom. And that draws the Ooze and Oz. 6-5 Nebraska. Cammie Miner sends the serve. Good pass. Set to the middle. Andy Jackson off the ticket out. Mitch point big run. They take down Stanford on the road at Maples Pavilion. And the Big Red's undefeated. Eight and oh. Here's your host, John Baylor, on the Huskers Radio Network. Greetings, Nebraska. Good evening. Hello. Happy Thursday. My goodness. Tomorrow night, say hello to number 21, Ohio State. And then Sunday evening, back-to-back -back Sunday evening matches in consecutive weeks. Number 12, Ohio, uh, Minnesota, on Sunday night at 6.30 these are matches three and four of five consecutive ranked opponents the Huskers have faced. The first was number five, Stanford. That was nine nights ago in Palo Alto. The Huskers win it three sets to one in a battle of four versus five. Then number 21, Plucky, Kentucky, came in, and Kentucky had the Huskers on the ropes. And finally, Nebraska surpassed the Wildcats late set four and winning that fourth set 25-21. Uh, one of the scarier matches of the season for Nebraska. And now, number 21, Ohio State, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, late night with the Big Red at the Devaney Central Time, and then a 6.30 start Sunday night, number 12, Minnesota. Hi again, folks. I'm John Baylor. 402-413-2400. 402-413-2400 to be on your Nebraska Volleyball Show soon to be joined by the 24-year head coach of Nebraska Volleyball, John Cook, two-time National Coach of the Year, four-time national champion, ten-time Final Four coach, ten times he's taken a Husker team to the NCAA Final Four in his 23 seasons. And things looking good thus far for the Big Red. 9-0 in 2023. In the non-conference season, your Huskers have risen from number four to number two in the country and starting to get some votes for number one. They got two votes. Sixty-two of the voters, these are coaches, voted for Wisconsin. Well, when you have a front row middle who's 6'9 and a Schmreck, you're going to get a lot of votes. Sixty-two of the 64 votes of first place going to Wisconsin. They're 9-0. and Nebraska's 9-0. and Florida is 8-1. and Florida almost took down Wisconsin the other day, but the sad news for Florida is that they have lost their starting setter for the rest of the year. So Florida is not the team they uh, once were earlier in the season. But I watched the end of that match, and they looked okay. Their backup setter looked pretty solid, but they did lose their last three sets and to Wisconsin in what uh, otherwise could have been a victory for the Gators. So Florida drops to number three. Stanford rises to number four. And Louisville drops to number five. Stanford and Louisville went at it in Louisville. And Stanford won those last three sets and won the fifth, 15 to 12. So the question is Florida without their starting setter. Is it the same Gator team? And then uh, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Stanford, and Louisville. Those four seem to be the headliners with the inside track at this juncture after of the season after finishing the non-conference and now we go to the conference season here's the rest of the top 10 oregon soon to be a big 10 school is number six washington state is number seven washington state they have four foreigners on that team they're 10 and one and they're probably ranked higher than they've ever been in the history of the program they're number seven pittsburgh is number eight texas is number nine you knew they'd drop after Logan Eggleston finished her glorious career, but you didn't think it'd be quite so quickly. Texas has already lost three matches. They're 5-3, and three, but they're Texas. They've got a ton of talent. they got Maddie Skinner on the outside. they got the Minnesota transfer, Jenna Wenis on the outside, and they've got great middles as they do. 
uh, every year. Asia O'Neill is one of those two. So you know they're loaded, but at this juncture in the season, they haven't totally put it together, and BYU is number 10. Nebraska, number two in the country, undefeated. 402 413 2400. Head coach John Cook shortly. This one brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Your trusted auto partner with 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. And we're in our Acres Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer. We'll get to the text messages and we'll get to the filling up phone lines when we come right back on your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Day by Day is the new documentary about Tom Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhuskers' decade-long pursuit of a national championship. Featuring interviews with former players and coaches, as well as famous fans like Peyton and Archie Manning, Larry the Cable Guy, and numerous NCAA and NFL legends. Day by Day is the riveting, untold story of one of the most dominant, celebrated, and controversial football teams ever. Now available on demand. We could tell you all about what makes Ford F-Series the number one trucks in America for 46 straight years. But why tell you when we could show you instead? Because in the Midwest, talk is cheap and actions speak. On the lake, on the job, or on the town. Choose the trucks that deliver on the claims. Ford F-Series is made for the real world. This is Chief's Kingdom. Get 3.9% financing for 66 months, plus up to 37.50 bonus cash on F-150 XLT. Official truck of the Kansas City Chiefs. Greetings, human neighbor. Hey, Zendar. I brought you a little gift for suggesting Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It's a great game. Affirmative. Since the Pick 5 jackpot grows by $10,000 each time it is not won, your enthusiasm is logical. However, no gratuity is required. You sure? It's 10 gallons of wiper fluid. I have reconsidered. Would you care to help Marlex and I consume it? No, no. I'm good. Nebraska Pick 5 top prize odds, 1 in 658,000. Woodhouse Chevy is making car buying better. Now with two convenient locations in Missouri Valley, Iowa, and our newest location in Omaha at 112th and Dodge. Plus, going on now, receive up to $6,000 off MSRP on the 2023 Chevy Silverado. Visit us in-store or online anytime to shop our current offers and inventory. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy in Missouri Valley and now in Omaha. With blue credits and data for details, offers are 731 2023. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. This year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring, and exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. Shelter Insurance has award-winning customer service at affordable rates. Plus, our local agents are there to help you understand what coverage you need. See Shelter Agent Sharon Lear in Papillion, Paul Hoos in Grand Island, or an Ord C Agent Matt Woodward. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Nickelode Ultra. The perfect balance of taste and refreshment in only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Greetings, human neighbor. Hey, Zendar. I brought you a little gift for suggesting Nebraska Pick 5 from the Nebraska Lottery. It's a great game. Affirmative. Since the Pick 5 jackpot grows by $10,000 each time it is not won, your enthusiasm is logical. However, no gratuity is required. You sure? It's 10 gallons of wiper fluid. I have reconsidered. Would you care to help Marlex and I consume it? No, no. I'm good. Nebraska Pick 5 top prize odds, 1 in 658,000. 
At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day-by-day -day donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Flu season is here and your Hy-Vee Pharmacy is here to help you stay healthy. Get your flu shot at Hy-Vee today and get a 20 cent Hy-Vee fuel saver. You can get your flu shot anytime the pharmacy is open. No appointment necessary. That's right. Get your flu shot with no appointment necessary. Get your flu shot today and earn a 20 cent Hy-V fuel saver only at Hy-V. Some restrictions apply. Greetings, welcome back to Nebraska Volleyball Show. Hey, contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, it is the law. And this one also brought to you by Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing. Endless flavor abilities. Dorothy Lynch, I'm John Baylor. There's the head coach, John Cook. Greetings. Greetings, JB. How Thurs you doing? Doing okay. I kind of like this switch. We used to be on Tuesday nights. Remember that? We are on Tuesday nights. Now we're on Thursday nights. I kind of like think, it. I think way back we were on Thursday nights. We've Take been it. all over the place. We're, like, we're, we're nomads. We're radio we just, nomads. It doesn't we matter. We, we just blow the ratings through the roof yeah. no matter what. <laughs> That's always the goal. More homo sapiens <clears> listening. <throat> yeah. I, I was listening to Sports Nightly. I think hey. it was last night. And... Uh, is it still called Sports Nightly? Oh, heck yeah. And they, they had our That's... podcast on, with, I did with Lauren you, on Monday. Yeah. yeah. So what they, what you do, this is how it works. Lauren calls you up, hooks in, you guys chat, kicking back with the cooks, then they play it on yeah. Sports yeah. Nightly. You're listening was, to your own voice. Listening. Yeah, I'm like, wow, this is interesting. I heard a little bit of that. <laughs> That's kind of nice. I feel like yeah. I'm kicking back yeah. with, with the cooks. The cooks yeah. yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> You like that? I mean, sometimes Lawrence feasts her famine on questions. Sometimes she's Mike Wallace, like 60 yeah. minutes. She's yeah. like, why isn't this player playing now? <laughs> and the rest of the time, it's like, hey, what's her hairstyle going to be yeah, next I week? Know, I mean, I which know. is it? I know. But I like it. She <laughs> softens you up with the easier questions, yeah. and then boom, comes in. Yeah. It's, it's, good it's a good, so, good one, Mike Wallace. <laughs> so here we got the live John Cook uh, with us. Um, Coach, there's a lot going on I want to chat with you about. But We're going to talk roping tonight. Yeah, I'm not got, sure your I, cowboy instincts are getting enough airtime, enough media play. Well, because I, I got a new rope. Good. Some, a cowboy out in Lexington, Nebraska sent me a new rope to try. Nice. It's a real cowboy rope they use for, on calves out there. And uh, so anyway, I'm fired up. But I'm really fired up because yes. I just got a bag full of shirts of my silhouette with a cowboy hat that they passed out. Did you know that? They your passed them out at the students. The student section, they're going to yeah. wear a shirt, a T-shirt, yeah. with your silhouette wearing a cowboy, cowboy hat. Yeah, how cool is that? I hear tomorrow night you're coming <laughs> in on a horse. <laughs> Not yet? Not yet. Not yet. How cool is that, though? That's super how cool. How many volleyball coaches are getting, getting a T-shirt like that? And, uh, and... Let me do some research. Guys. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. Anyway, okay, JB, I'll let you, you go here. You've earned it. Well, what do you got? There's a lot what of good got? things. There's a lot of good stuff going on here. Uh, your team is 9-0. Is how pleasantly surprised were you by the Stanford performance? Forget about the outcome. Everyone knows that's pleasing. I want to know the performance. You lose set three. You're thinking, oh, boy, we're on the road. We've never seen this kind of adversity all year. Probably going five. Nope. Four and done. Yeah. No, they, <clears throat> they responded with a great road, road win. They, they competed really hard. They didn't let anything get to them. Uh, and... Uh, they just kept playing Husker volleyball with, with a lot of belief. Laney just kept waving off the trainer, Jolene. She's like, no, no, yeah. I'm staying out here after yeah. the big collision. Yeah, yeah, she did. She stuck it out, and then she wasn't well for the next game. It's like, hold yeah. on. Yeah. So How's she doing now? <clears throat> she's doing good. She's back Great. in practice. She's, she'll play tomorrow. And um, so, um, you know, again, we're with, you know, everything with concussions and head. And she, she tweaked her neck. That was uh, one of the big things, just uh, how she hit. Uh, I'm just glad she didn't hit Becca. <laughs> it was my Harper. Or how about yeah. Harper? To, you know, just kind of bounce off Harper, but you know, or or, or you, you got to be careful around Becca. She's yeah. body bumping people <laughs> and know, she's she coming is. in. Like she she's she's doing some cool stuff. Yeah. Fans really responded to her excitement and how she celebrated yeah. on, on yeah. that Stanford match. Yeah, yeah. Becca Becca had a great match. 
I mean, Becca's leading the conference in blocking right now. She's she's getting after it. But anyway, you just got to be careful these mm -hmm. days. And the, you know, these days, and uh, you know, they're not feeling 100. percent Our trainer doesn't let them back in. Good. How about Lindsay? How's she feeling after Lin the car Lindsay's back in. She's got all that tape all over the Kerry Walsh. You know, I I don't know what tape they Those, call the, it. The black streak he's played. Yeah. Those are cool. It's like zinc or I don't I don't know what it all is. I, don't, I love wearing Magnesium. this. I don't know what it does, oh, but it okay. looks cool. So you wear it. Uh, not not very often, but <laughs> <laughs> underneath my shirts. Yeah. But, so she's all taped up, but but she she actually had a really good day yesterday and really yeah. good day today. What does that tape do? I think it, it moves the blood around more. It stimulates. I, I, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what it does. Your players are wearing black tape, and you're not sure what it does. I don't know if it's got magnets in it or magnesium. Yeah, I think you're on. Maybe maybe somebody will call in and tell us. Yeah. If you want to sell stuff, just say, oh, <laughs> yeah. it's got magnets and magnesium. Everyone's yeah. like, okay, count yeah. me in. Yeah, or titanium, or yeah, it's got go. something in it. There you go. Nickel. Yeah. Um, I saw the new iPhones are titanium. I'm thinking about getting one because I just I love titanium. They're, they're, they're basically just looking at the, the, uh, the, the chart, the science chart, and they're just picking out stuff, and they're choosing it, and people are buying it. Yeah. I mean, if you feel like you got a phone, you feel like you're really flying a fighter jet or something. So Lindsay 100%, Laney 100% for tomorrow night? Yeah, I think they're, they're good to go. Okay. Bergen Riley, she's out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, Florida just lost their, their fabulous setter, which is, is really sad. Ellie Stuckey, she's out. Um, she tweeted out that she uh, tore ACL and her MCL. So they're going up with a backup setter who's a transfer from Flagler uh, University, Division II school, comes from Wisconsin. Looked pretty good, but didn't finish off the win against Wisconsin. Anyway, back to Stuckey. She's from Laramie, Wyoming. Ellie Glock is the starting setter for Louisville. She's out of Wahoo, Nebraska. Three of the top five teams have starting setters from Laramie, Wahoo, and Sioux Falls. What's that telling us? Yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing when you think about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to make of that. It's just, uh, you know, I, I can give you a little history on that. Um, so uh, the Florida setter, uh, her mom played at Kansas. And they moved to Laramie, Wyoming, and she actually, I, I got to know her. We, we did not recruit her at that time because we weren't recruiting a setter in that class. And uh, anyway, she, because uh, we had Nicklin and Kennedy's, because she's a, she would be a sophomore this year, I think. And she started last year yeah, as a freshman. Yeah, Alexis Stuckey. Yep. So anyway, they ride horses and everything. So we, we got all kind of reconnected. It was pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, you know, Glock's from, you know, famous, Wahoo. famous dad and Jason. And, yeah. And she went out to USC and I, I, you know, didn't work out out there, which a lot of these kids that go out to LA doesn't seem like it works out, yeah. but, uh, she's found a great home and, you know, it just shows you how good a trainer Danny is. But I think, and then, uh, and then Bergen at Sioux Falls, uh, there, there, a club started, and the most famous player that came out of there is Taryn Cloth, who's now the number one beach team in the, for the United States, getting ready to go to qualify for the Olympics. And Taryn played at Creighton. So a guy, a guy named Mitch started that club up there, and we went up and did several clinics. I did clinics. Jalen did clinics. I'm not sure if Kelly went up there, but uh, uh, we went up and helped help them get that club going. Well, it just blossomed. And now you're seeing, you, you see Taryn Cloth, who's a world class, and now Bergen's come out of there. And... Sammy Slaughter Sam, and, yeah. and Inesh Gazebo from yeah. the same area. So you build it and they will come and, and there's good athletes and, and uh, if you get good training and good preparation, that's how you develop those players. And, but I remember uh, Mitch up there, the director, calling me when Bergen was an eighth grader and he said, here's somebody you're going to want to recruit as an eighth, eighth, eighth grader. Eighth grade. Sent me a little video clip. And of course, Stucky has a great, you know, mom played at Kansas and... Um, but she, all the, all those guys have played on the USA teams together, and I think Glock is the is this kind of, uh, to me the the really really cool story of somebody who went to SC, you know, didn't work out, and now she's leading Louisville uh, and having a great year and doing really well. I watched one of a couple of their matches. I mean, she's she's doing a really nice job. So, Wahoo to USC, yeah, yeah. to Louisville, yeah. She's finally getting her shot. Yeah, so. Three great stories there. I don't know who who are the other top that, teams. Uh, well, Wisconsin's going with two setters, okay. MJ Hamill and yeah. Izzy Ashburn. 
And that kind of surprised, you know my thoughts <clears throat> on, on, on two stairs, which you don't care about. Good yeah, for you. I don't care and, about And that is that, uh, but I'm thinking they might be tougher with two setters than most elite teams because they've played together. This is the same system they ran last year. Yeah. So if any team is going to be good with two setters, working out all those challenges, it's a team that's been doing it with the same personnel for two full seasons. Yeah, yeah. And who's the other, other top? Uh, Stanford? Stanford, Cammie Cammie Minor. Minor. She's okay. She's from, I think she's, she's from Vegas. No, no, no. She's Southern California. Oh, SoCal? Yeah, Orange County. Okay. Hey, Newport, Newport Beach. Yeah. Well, her dad, I think, is Harold Minor. I do, too. Yeah. He holds a scoring record at the Devaney Center. There you go. Small he world. Was, it's all connect, it all goes through Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, all the it, volleyball it, it, world. Yes. JB, uh, did you see the tweet that Lincoln uh, tweeted out yesterday? Lincoln Arneal. Arneal. Guy is yeah. a Fount. Did you see the tweet he tweeted out yesterday? Not yet. No, I've been looking for it. Okay. Let's put this in perspective. Okay. I talk about this all the time. Okay. Right now, so we're, Nebraska's ranked number two, Creighton, 11. Yes. Wayne State's ranked number one in Division II. Wow. Uh, Kearney is 10. So Wayne State's good indoors. Outdoors, they, they struggle a little bit in the, in the wind. <laughs> but indoors are solid. They're number one. Yeah. Wayne State. Yes. There's five NAI schools ranked in the top 20. I, you know, Concordia. I, I can't remember Bluff. all the, Yeah, I can't remember all the And then in junior college, there's uh, two teams ranked in the top 10. Wow. And then Omaha. No, I'm sorry. Papillion South, I think, is 10th in the nation. What about Division three? Don't we have anybody good in Division three in this state? We don't have Division three here. Well, we got a couple. Who? I'm doing some thinking. <laughs> Wesleyan no used to be Division three. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Maybe they're Division. Yeah, I didn't I see anything in Division three. Look at that. Eye. All those different okay. levels, and a high school team is ranked tenth in the country. All those different levels. Mm. I mean, this is the epicenter of volleyball. That's pretty cool. Scott Kneifel, head coach at Wayne yeah. State. Guy's got it rolling. Yeah. How does that guy not get hired away? I don't think he want, wanted, yeah. wanted to leave. I mean, Wayne's, he's had chances. He just likes it there, and Wayne, his family's sweet, there. Seen that sweet golf course up there right off the I've, university? I've seen that. But it's sweet. Yeah. But great, great schools, Wayne High. Yeah. I think he likes it. And this, you know, his, he's, um, he's got a son playing baseball here now. Nice. Yeah. So you need to get on the call for baseball. <laughs> this is your Nebraska Volleyball Show, 402-413-2400. We got Charlie. Charlie, great to have you. You're on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. Hello, Charlie. Yeah. Good. Hello? Hey, greetings. Hello? Greetings. We, we hear you, Charlie. Charlie, hang on. Hold on. Hold on, Charlie. Don't worry about it. You stay right there, Charlie. Can you, hear, can you hear us now? Yes, sir. All right. Totally my fault, Charlie. You did everything fine. All right. Operator error. Welcome. You're on the, you're on the air. Thank you, John. Coach Cook, where is the process of the recruiting of Abigail Mullins and Kerry Spears? Is Nebraska pursuing these players? Uh, due to NCAA rules, uh, I cannot answer that question. So, uh, but we're always recruiting. Uh, Charlie, are you the father or <laughs> uncle of either of these kids? No. no. Okay. Yeah. But those are, uh, yeah, again, I can't comment on, because they're underage recruits, so we can't, until they sign, we can't really comment on any recruiting recruits. So. Okay. Uh, I appreciate your time, Coach. Okay, Thanks, you're Charlie. welcome. This reminds me of a, a former Husker football uh, coaches show. This is like 20 years ago. And we had, uh, and Charlie, um, uh, no, it was Milt. Milt Teneper was on that night. Because Tom, Coach Osborne would let his coaches go on and, uh, and collect the dough for being on the coaches show. Anyway, this, girl, this young woman calls in, wants to know why endowment, not endowment, but something Demetra Sue. Demetri Sui was a lineman. He wasn't playing much. And she calls and goes, why isn't this guy playing more? Well, it turned out that she was the girlfriend of the oh. player trying to figure out. So it just reminded me a little bit of that uh, Constantine Demetri Sue. Why isn't Constantine Demetri Sue playing? That was good radio. But family members call in, try to figure out what's going on with the playing type. 402-413-2400. Ohio State tomorrow night, Coach. They're number 21 in the country. They're 3-6. and six. They've lost six in a row, but they've had a gauntlet. Of, of top teams play against, but this is the Emily Londot show. I mean, they had five seniors last year, and rather than hang on to two of them because they all get this COVID year, all five go away. So, they, you know, they didn't have any scholarships, but they couldn't figure out the NIL thing. I mean, all five leave, and you wonder, what would this program be if they still had Mac Pedraza, uh, the all-Big Ten uh, player of the year, plays setter uh, last year? 
what if they had Gabby Gonzalez, who's tearing it up now at, at Oregon? She's not just defensively, but now offensively. If you throw in a, another arm, if you throw in an elite setter rather, rather than their freshman setter, this is a top five, top six program. So I'm going to get a chance to talk to their coach in, in the morning. I'm just, <clears> that's <throat> what I'm going to ask her. Is I'm just, I, I understand they're out of scholarships. They get 12 and they're out. They committed to these freshmen. But they're, you know, especially Ohio State with their funding, you, you, you wonder if they could have found a way. They're still a strong team. They got Riley Rader at middle. They got Emily Londot who's one of the best in the business on the right side. I think she's doing everything, playing left, right, the whole deal. But man, if they had another arm in the setters, you just wonder what might have been. Well, they, you get, you know, Janiza Moore tore us up last year. She's at Tennessee now. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, the coach, uh, Jen, has obviously made a commitment. Is keeping that commitment to the kids she recruited. Uh, you know, that's the, you know, the problem with this COVID thing. It, it really it messes with programs and, and, but some programs, you know, they're taking those players, those 50 year players and building teams around it. So, uh, but I admire her for sticking with it. And, and, uh, you know, it's fun to develop players and, and especially young players. And, but look, you know, you can just take their record, whatever. This is first night of the big 10 for us and them. Clean slate. And they're very physical. London is one of the best players in the country. Radar is one of the best middles in the country. And, um, you know, they, they've got athletes and, you know, they've gone, had a lot of close matches with a lot of top teams. Londot, 413 attacks this year. The next highest, 176. Chelsea Thorpe, who didn't even get into the Baylor match. I mean, you can probably really key on Londot. Yeah, but yeah. She's, she's still, I mean, we've been... You know, we prepare for her, but she's, she's a pretty special player. Here's Dave in Norfolk. Dave, great to have you on the Nebraska Volleyball hey, Show. Coach. How hey, you doing? Coach. Yeah. Congratulations on an amazing start. Thanks. Best of luck in coming up in the Big Ten. I got to say thank you for mentioning Wayne High and Wayne State. I want to love that Wayne High. Okay. Nice. The uh, home of the uh, wild, uh, not Wildcats, that's Wayne State. What's Wayne High's nickname? Who Devils. Blue, blue devils, devils, blue and white. Oh, of course. Oh. Nice. Awesome. Love it up there. Great people. Okay. Best of luck in the Big Ten. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for calling. Good stuff. You bet. Nine and oh, everyone's happy. We got to get Lauren on here. She'll start firing off some tough <laughs> questions. Yeah. 402, 413, 2400. We got field correspondents checking in. Hey, look, if you're going to mention Ellie Glock, you can't just mention Jason, her dad. Troy, hello. Played for Wahoo High, hit one of the biggest shots in the history of the the high school state basketball tournament. We just lost. Was all that against Pius? I just said we just lost all of our Pius the Tenth yeah, listeners yeah, right there. Stay right there. More Nebraska volleyball yeah. show after you hear this. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. 
It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Beardmore Subaru celebrates Nebraska volleyball again this season. Five national championships, 47 All-Americans, and a home sellout streak dating back to 2001. The longest streak for any women's sport in NCAA history. Beardmore Subaru has been a proud supporter of Husker volleyball for more than 10 years. Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue has the new Subaru Outback Wilderness. Loaded with off-road ready upgrades and the new Solterra, Subaru's first ever all-electric and all-wheel drive vehicle. Go Big Red. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. What's colder than the coldest? A polar bear. I have reports of polar bear on the loops. Ma'am, is it cold enough for a polar bear in here? Yes, we use SOS. Come on in. SOS to the rescue! Nebraska defense lineman Nash Hubbard here. People know me as the polar bear, and when I want to stay cool, I call SOS. Their texts don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than the competition, guaranteed. Mention the polar bear and get a free 10-year labor warranty on New York equipment. The best warranty in town. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Welcome back to your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Big Red, number two in the land, 9-0. and oh. Say hello to number 21, Ohio State, tomorrow night. They're 3-6. and six. They've lost six in a row, but they've been playing a lot of the big ones. They almost took down Baylor uh, last weekend, dropping that one in five. Hey, if problem gambling is burning up your money, there is a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment. Just help. Visit lifeafterbet.com. Dot com, lifeafterbet.com. This one brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online, woodhouse.com. Jim in Oshkosh, Nebraska. Hello, Jim. Great to have you on the Nebraska yeah. Volleyball Show. Well, thank you. Coach, uh, I just uh, have heard you comment many times that You've said that uh, you would pay to watch your team practice. How about uh, arranging uh, a date, maybe like uh, same day as spring football game, that uh, you had fans come in, and and there's a lot of us would love to pay to watch your team practice. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do that. Uh, you know, uh, we, we did uh, something in two days for the people that – had have, have the court side seats uh, just because we hadn't done anything be- since before COVID. We used to do it, so that's a great idea. And, and we, we started that, so maybe this year it'll be a good year to do it. But We'd love to, love to. Thanks, Jim. Sorry to cut you off there. But, uh, yeah, you're the only 
uh, women's program in the country that is showing a profit right now. Yeah. And um, just Jim's identified another revenue stream, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> Lindsay from Omaha, I often notice Bergen gets the Nebraska hitters one-on-one -on -one opportunities. What is it about her that makes her so deceptive? What are Nebraska's blockers watching for in the opposing team setter to clue them in on where to set up the block? Thanks. Yeah, it's a really good question, uh, Bergen. Uh, you know what? What it uh, what makes her deceptive is she looks the same on every set, no matter where she's mm -hmm. setting. And you know, I'll, I'll use a football analogy: quarterbacks, good quarterbacks, don't give it away with their eyes. They're scanning the whole field, and then they throw. Quarterbacks that look at their receiver, those guys are all over it. So some setters are like that. They're like, okay, I'm going to set this person. Bergen just stays very neutral and, and, and doesn't really give anything away. And that's, that's what the top-level setters do. Just got this in from Anonymous. With the increased national profile of women's volleyball, do you still advocate for a spring volleyball season rather than competing with football in the fall? Um, I, I still think it's, it's a great idea. I don't think anybody else does. But... Uh, you know, it would it would solve a lot of problems. You know, and, and so, you know we're playing on Sunday because of football, and we have all these Sunday matches because we can't get hotels. We, you know, it's it's a nightmare playing around football games, especially when you go on the road. And I think the feeling is that volleyball would compete against softball, and softball's got a really good thing going. Yeah, it's a really nice TV package. <clears throat> it's two hours, yep. lots of drama. I, I've come around to understanding, you know, why uh, oh, softball but, is so popular. But we're competing with men's and women's basketball, NBA, NFL, yep, yep. hockey, college football. <laughs> so, and doing it all this in December, you know, for, our, for the championships and so on. I think one of the answers, though, John, is, and this has been proposed, is we move our season up a couple weeks, and that way we could have our own window for the championships in the NCAA tournament. You know, maybe start the NCAA tournament Thanksgiving weekend or the mm -hmm. weekend before and play through that, and, but we'd have to start our season earlier in August. And that's a down period for other sports. Uh, everyone's looking for content, right. looking for sports to cheer for in the middle of August. Yeah, I heard everybody's in favor of it except for Stanford and the quarter right, schools because they're not in school. Yeah. So that's one of the problems is they don't start school till September. Yeah, 20th. Yeah. 21st, 22nd. Yeah. So they would be playing, you know, six, six weeks. weeks with no And they got to get there school. early, so they'd be, you know, nine, <clears throat> you could create some academic thing for the athletes, uh, the volleyball players somehow. They could get some credits as they're actually yeah. going to class, but just not But the idea is they're playing, they're playing at a, you know, their students aren't on campus. Yeah. I don't know what football does there, you know, when the students aren't on campus. It's got to be same deal. boring football game. Yeah, because they start early August. Yeah. yeah. Like s seven weeks. Maybe get away from that quarter system. That's one yeah. uh, solution. Apparently, according to uh, one field correspondent's research, a lot of the opposing team's blocking errors are occurring when Harper Murray is attacking. What's your thought on that? Is Harper powering it through? No, I think uh, sometimes we set Harper a little faster, and I think that stress, you know, stresses the block a little bit, and that might be causing it, but I... Other than that, I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, and what happens to create a blocking error? Well, if, if the if the blockers are late and stressed, okay. and um, so they're trying to get there, and then they 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 might be off balance or whatever and hit the net. So so it goes off their hands. They have a shot, but yeah, it's considered an error. Yeah. But normally, you know, if you tool the block, that's not called a blocking error against no. the opponent. No. Nope. It's blocking a net is, you know, in the net, touching the net. That's okay, a blocking got, error. Gotcha. Yeah. So an infraction, actually, yeah. uh, hitting the net. We're getting lots of text messages flying in here. Um, is there an easy way to describe the substitution rules, or will that take most of the show? No, it's very simple. So um, the, the easiest way to explain it internationally there's, you're allowed six substitutions. So there's six players on the court. One person can come in at each spot, and one person can come out. That's it. And you've got your libero who plays all the way around. Or plays, is, uh, libero means free players, so they don't have any substitution rules or anything. Except internationally, the libero can't serve. In college, <clears throat> and I, I started with that, John, because now it gets comp more complicated in college. college, you have 15 subs plus the libero, which can serve, and you can come in and out as many times as you want 
you know, for you, you and I could go in and out 15 times. Mm. Just you and I, and then that would use but up all of our internationally, stuff. Internationally, once you're out. Once you're out and, you, and the, other, the, the other person come back in, that is it. Mm. No mas. So uh, we're a little more complicated, but that's the substitution rules. So you could do 15 all in one position. You could do, spread that o out over six positions. And, you know, last year when we ran a 6-2, we had to do a lot of double subbing, we call it, where setter comes in and a hitter comes in, and then you flip it three rotations later. So, and that, you know, hurt us against Oregon. We ran out of subs in that game that went 36-34 or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So the college rules are way more liberal than international rules, but the international rules keep it really simple, and that's it. One in, one out. College, there's 15. Who on your staff is tracking the subs so you know, whoa, I'm down to four subs. I'm Kel down to Kelly's subs. supposed to, but we can ask the referee anytime. And the referees are usually really good at telling you, hey, you're at 12 subs, you're at 13 subs. They're, because and when somebody subs in and out, they'll kind of tell you, hey, they'll mm -hmm. hold up the you know, 13 sign or 14 just to let you know. But the good refs are really good at that, but uh, Kelly tracks it. And 15 subs is the max yeah. per set. Yep. And that allows you to play a lot more players, yeah. get a lot more players involved. And, and the, the, the NCAA likes that, or the most, most of the coaches like that because uh, they want to have, they want to involve as many players as possible. I'm on the rules committee. I propose we go to eight subs. How'd and, that go? And not good. <laughs> 402, 413, 2400. And what were the strongest objections? Well, because they want to play more players. Uh, the Division three schools, you know, as you know, being in the college business, they recruit players for to have student population or attendance. I'm yes, they want right. homo sapiens. They want paying <clears throat> students. They want paying students. So they might have 25 kids. So it's yeah. a way that they can play them. <clears throat> the problem is, if you remember this 2006 Omaha in the, national ch in the semifinals of the Final Four, we played UCLA. Yeah. And you remember their, their great player. Dana Merriweather. Yep. And... If you remember what turned that match, Sarah Pavin went back and served 10 straight jump serves, and Nana was out of the game mm. because she only played three rotations. And <clears throat> afterward, they said, Why did they ask me, why did the UCLA coach take their best player out? <laughs> I mean, when you watch football, yeah. you know, they're going to have the best player. Well, uh, Tom Brady usually played. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's a great. So, from, from a media point and fan point of view, you want your best players out there yeah. as much as you can. Yeah. And international rules force those players to be out there more because they can't sub out. But that's really the coach's choice. They, Andy Banikowski <laughs> could have taught, coached Nana Merriweather to play all the way around, knowing that she's such an elite attacker. And they could have hit her um, uh, the other night against Stanford. Uh, Kendall Kip got hidden yeah. on the on the serve receive, but then she suddenly showed up when it was yeah. time to set but, her. But here's the problem, John. Mm. Because of our rules. You got the same thing in high school, same thing in club. So these kids, I mean, Never there, there's middles, you know, internationally, you, the middles have to serve. Everybody has to serve except the libero. Well, there's, there's players that go to the national team that have never served in a match. Mm. And now they got to go serve at the, on, the, on the highest level in the, in the world. So it limits their uh, Yeah, because everybody just subs them out. Yeah, yeah it's... it's and when it really became evident to me was when we played Texas, ironically, that same year, 2006. Destiny Hooker, freshman year, 21 kills. Late in the fifth set, she rotates to the back row, gets pulled out. Huskers pull it out. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, that's a, there's a lot of, co I would say a lot of the coaches in the higher level teams, top 25 teams, would love to see us go to eight subs. It would be better for the game, better for TV, better developed stars and, and people to follow it, especially if they're not volleyball nerds. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it would also force coaches to have to coach but more mm. and not just recruit. Now, now that 5'10 outside hitter is going to be really, really important and not just, oh, I'm going to get the biggest, most physical player and then sub them out in the back row. It's come to the point that specialization is so central that Emily Londotts and Logan Eggleston's are exceptions. We make, you, totally you, exceptions. you talk about them in the yeah. pregame, like hey, she's a six rotation player. Yeah. Because most of them are like Skylar Fields, the former Texas star now at right. USC, three rotations and out. Right. And she's explosive. She's incredible to watch. And she plays half the time. Yeah. Here's Mark in Omaha. Hi, Mark. Welcome. You're on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. 
Hi, how you doing? Good. And, um, and now that you're on the rules a little bit, can you explain what a violation is when they do a back row attack? And on the 6-2, does the center, the center cannot go to the front row? Is that, is that correct? <clears throat> okay. Um, so the back row violation, a back row attack, there's a 10-foot line there, and they can't jump in front of that. They can't touch it and ju or jump in front of it if you're in the back row. So if you, if you happen to approach and jump and you're higher than the net, then, and you hit that line or you're in front of that line closer to the net, then that'll be a violation. The 6-2, the setters can go to the front row. It's just a lot of teams run a system where the setters only play three rotations in the back row and they sub them out in the front row. If you look at Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh had a, a great player, Rachel Fairbanks, who set three rotations in the back row, then hit three rotations in the front row. So she played all six rotations as a setter, hitter, and they subbed another setter in the back row when she was in the front row. Mm. So it just depends on your talent and level. One of the best teams I've ever seen, and John would know this, maybe, maybe you were at Stanford, but was when uh, Sharpley and those guys, they ran a true 6-2 where the setters set and hit. Lisa Sharpley and... Um, yeah. Mm. I can picture her right now. That was a great Kristen team. Kristen Focal was on the yeah, outside. That was a great oh. team. Yeah. Just I mean, they were fun to watch because they let all those guys got to play, hit, do set, do everything. Mid nineties. Stanford. Four oh two, <clears throat> four thirteen, twenty four hundred. Yeah, that, that back row attack rule, as long as you launch from behind that ten yeah. foot line, you can go as high as you want. Yeah. But if you're a back row player and you launch with a foot on the on the line or in front of the line, You've got to make contact below the top of the net, right? Yeah, correct. And, but you watch men's volleyball. There's guys that take off behind a 10-foot line. They're landing on the center line <laughs> under the net. I mean, that's how far they're jumping. Harper gets awfully close. She's making contact when the set's there, four and yeah. a half feet off the net, yeah. four feet off the net. Yeah. This is your Nebraska Volleyball Show. There's room at the table. Saving you money on every gallon at a CVA fuel site, Central Valley Ag offers a five cent per gallon discount at the pump to CVA fuel card holders. Now, for a limited time, get a five cent discount and be entered to win two VIP tickets to a Husker football game when you get a new or additional CVA fuel card. Sign up to win at CVAcoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co op of Husker Nation. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals and will share information with them to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. I'm Ty Burrell, actor and small business owner. You can trust Innovation Refunds with your small business's ERC claim because of their SOC 2 Type 1 security compliance. Without this, how can you be sure a company can protect your information? It's not like here on the radio where all you need to be secure is a sensor button. My password to my bank account is Ty's cool password 1. Uh-oh. Luckily, Innovation Refunds is more reliable. Go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS to get started. There's a new kind of season ticket when you fly from the Lincoln Airport, the official airport of the Huskers. Now at LNK, choose from fast, affordable, non-stop flights to your favorite vacation spots. All from an airport that's relaxed and hassle-free. It's never been easier to get off the bench and enjoy an adventure with the whole family. Visit GoFlyLNK.com and book your trip today. Let's go. 
Welcome back to your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Stay right there. Greg and Jessica are getting ready to bring you hour number two. This one brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online, woodhouse.com. And, hey, get a $0.05 per gallon discount using a CVA fuel card for a limited time. Register for a fuel card and be entered to win two VIP tickets to a Husker football game at cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. This week, the Conference Player of the Week is Merritt Beast, and the Conference Freshman of the Week is Harper Murray, and we got an a upset fan, Fred in Grand Island. He wants to know who picks these Big Ten Players of the Week. What does Bergen have to do to be Freshman or Setter of the Week? <laughs> I like Husker fans. Not happy. Yeah. I don't know. We, don't, we really don't care about it. We don't talk about it. It's next point, baby. Nice. <laughs> One point at a time. Minnesota's right now playing Iowa. Minnesota won the first set, 18-13 Iowa, set two. So Iowa's trying to pull the shocker in, in uh, Iowa City. Big, Big Ten volleyball. It's, it's going to be a wild ride. Clean slate. Throw away the records. It's a border war. That's right. <laughs> um, right now, uh, if Laney's healthy... You're back to full strength, and if Lindsay's healthy, you're back to uh, full strength, and uh, you're back to those tough decisions you've had to make over who gets to play. What gets into that calculus? Is it a game time decision? Is it all the stature keeping at practices? Is it gut? What's going on? I have a psychic that I go to, and, nice. she, and she tells me what to do. And uh, what does she wear? Does she have like a crystal ball? And <laughs> She's got all that stuff. Nice. Cards, tarot. Cards, tarot. Good stuff. Crystals, all that stuff. <laughs> and, uh, but is it you? Is it Jalen? Kelly? Who does it? And by the way, it's when's psychic. Jordan coming? When's Jordan going to join the Jordan's going to be here uh, September 26th. Nice. Yeah. Pretty soon. Yeah. That's so going to help. She, she's in Poland right now. They're trying to qualify. I don't know if they played today, uh, but it's, a, it's seven matches. So everybody plays everybody, seven matches, and whoever wins it qualifies for the Olympics. Whew, if you don't, you got it. The next opportunity, I think, for USA is a competition called the Norsecas. I'm not sure when that'll be. So you, there's only a couple chances. You know, you, people don't realize you have to qualify for the Olympics. The only team that doesn't is the host team. Mm. I'm glad she's there. I remember when we had that nice little outing in downtown Lincoln for the Nebraska Greats yeah, Foundation. Yeah. Boy, it seems like another lifetime ago. But Justine was there. She's on the team as well. Michelle Barch, by the way, former gold medal teammate, is an assistant coach now at Ohio State. Oh, is she? Uh, Jen oh, wow. Flynn Oldenburg was her assistant at Illinois. Yeah. And Michelle Barch is the paid assistant. Uh, so we got a gold medal winner in the house uh, against um, Ohio State tomorrow night. Anyway. You need to fly Jordan in. Fly, it's got to fly Jordan, <laughs> so we got one. Uh, too, but Justine mentioned how big a boost it was to the, the country's chances in Paris next summer when Jordan announced she'd come back, and yeah. how they all respect her so much on the team. Yeah, I think I think, I think from a leadership experience, and uh, uh, you know, she's she's a valuable asset for you know. It's it's a fairly young team. Um, <clears throat> they're not returning a lot of people off that uh, gold medal team, so it's. You know, they're building, so she can really help Bef with that. Before the Wisconsin match and practice that week, just unleash Jordan. <laughs> That'll get the Huskers ready. Yeah. Final thoughts, what's important tomorrow night against Ohio State besides winning? Well, it's it's opening the Big Ten. We're going we're gonna to have to be prepared, mentally prepared to play a battle, and our hopefully our fans are going to blow the roof off this weekend. That's John Cook. This is your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Good night, Nebraska. Text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm broadcasting student Grant Hansen with Campus News. University of Nebraska leadership has launched a $3 billion fundraising campaign to support education access for Nebraska students. The Only in Nebraska campaign, the largest in university history, will focus on creating scholarships to make education more affordable, attracting more Nebraska students, and keeping young people in the state after graduation. Discover your next Ford with Woodhouse. The truck you've always wanted to the SUV you need, Woodhouse has the full lineup. Plus a huge selection guarantees you'll get the features that matter and at a smart price, like our current offer on a new Ford F-150 
or needing the versatility of an SUV to take on the everyday, shop our offers going on now. Find your Ford with Woodhouse online or at one of our three convenient locations. There's room at the table, saving you money on every gallon at a CVA fuel site. Central Valley Ag offers a five cent per gallon discount at the pump to CVA fuel card holders. Now, for a limited time, get a five cent discount and be entered to win two VIP tickets to a Husker football game when you get a new or additional CVA fuel card. Sign up to win at CVAcoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. There are a lot of rates out there, and it can be tough to find the right one. Well, let's make it easy. With FNBO's special offer CD of 5.5% APY for 3, 7, or 17 months, you can earn more, save more, and do more. That's 5.5% annual percentage yield for 3, 7, or 17 months at your nearest FNBO location with a minimum deposit of $500 and an FNBO Premier checking account. So stop on by and give your savings a great big boost with the Great Big Small Bank. FNBO, member FDIC.
Good evening, I'm Camden Cohn, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Earlier today, head coach Matt Rule spoke to the media for the final time prior to the Louisiana Tech game this weekend. One topic that Coach Rule talked about was the status of quarterback Jeff Sims. The practice moved around well, threw the ball really well, so, uh, you know, I... Coming off an injury like that, I can't say that he's, you know, maybe 100%, but he doesn't look, you don't notice that there's anything wrong with him as he plays. More from Coach Rule in a little bit. Nebraska soccer traveled to Columbus to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes today. That game just went final. The Huskers defeated Ohio State 2-1. to one. Earlier today, the Big Ten released the conference women's basketball schedules. Huskers started off Big Ten play at home against the Maryland Terrapins before traveling to Wisconsin. Nebraska closes the season against... Minnesota at home, and then travels to Illinois to finish the regular season. For more information, visit Huskers.com. Former Husker basketball player Trey McGowans was one of four players named to the USA 3-on-3 U23 World Cup team earlier today. The event takes place in Poland from September 27th to October 1st. In a little bit, the New York Giants traveled to San Francisco to take on the 49ers in Thursday night football. And in baseball action, some finals from earlier today, the Brewers defeated the Cardinals 6-0, and the Rays defeated the Angels 5-4. Currently, the Yankees lead the Blue Jays 3-0 in the fourth, the Cubs and the Pirates are scoreless in the first, and the Phillies and Mets are tied at two apiece in the third. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Heinrich with five on a play clock, gets the snap, hands it off to Ramirez, no fakes a pan off, throws it to the flat, the camp makes a catch, five, touchdown, Nebraska, great ball fake by Heinrich, flipped it in the flat, the camp, scoots in there, Nebraska leads it 6 nothing. Liz Grigorski, former Wisconsin Badger, line drive serve, good pass, Rodriguez the slide, wow, Andy Jackson, kaboom, and that draws some oohs and ahs. Lombardi, play actions, being rushed, gets hit, goes down, and then a sack for the Cornhuskers, and Jay Sherman, the first on the scene, it's a loss of nine. Cammy Miner sends the serve. Good pass set to the middle. Andy Jackson off the ticket out. Match point, big run. They take down Stanford on the road at Maples Pavilion. And the Big Reds undefeated. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Here we are back for hour number two. Hope you enjoyed last hour. How could you not? Those guys are fun to listen to. They, uh, they tend to get off the beaten path a little bit, but I think that's okay, right? Then talk about other things. Yes, I mean, you never know what you're going to get with those with the those Johns. <laughs> with the Johns, you never know where it's going to go. You can think in your mind, okay, they'll probably talk about this, and then it's completely off the rails sometimes. But hey, it's fun. It's it's enjoyable because you don't always get to hear a coach like that, no. you know. And he's, um, I think he likes. Doing, talking about all those different things. He likes the questions that come in that are off the beaten path a little bit that, he, that are different from what he gets in his press conferences. And he's right. Conference play is here. They've got um, Iowa, Minnesota tied at a set apiece. The Gophers will leave Iowa City and come over here for the match on Sunday. Huskers will host the Buckeyes tomorrow night at 8, pregame at 7. That means we only have an hour sports only headed your way tomorrow night. So just a full hour tonight with us. We've got a lot to get to. Matt Rural did meet with the media today. Camden played the cut about the Jeff Sims looks good. To me, Jessica, and he didn't say this, they tried to pin him down. He wouldn't, he wouldn't give him the full answer. But my gut says I think we're going to see Jeff Sims take the first snaps on Saturday. I do too. And, you know, it's you could go through practice and – hold them back a little bit and go full speed. But until you get out there in a game and you take the full hits, you don't know. And so I, I think they'll they'll give it a go. But again, you have a great option and what you just saw to your backup if you need to go to him or if you need to limit his snaps. And maybe in the second half when you might not have seen another quarterback as quickly, maybe they will go to him quicker. Who knows? Just maybe get, just getting a feel for how he is coming off that injury. But yeah, I, I'm... You and I have said this all week that we think if Jeff is healthy and feels good enough to go, that he will be the guy. And he did say today he's not opposed to playing two. So maybe Heinrich gets a series in the first half or a series in each half. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. I I know that there's fans that are, are not going to like it if Jeff Sims goes out there. But again, as you and I have said, 
He won the job in the spring, and he kept the job during August as they led up to the game. And the injury is what kept him out of last week's game. Yeah, and, and again, you don't want to make a case where your guys are losing their jobs because of injury. That's, that's not a... That's not good in any locker room. I mean, Searles went on a big tangent about that, about how, you know, it's not how it's done in the NFL. It's 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 a quick way to lose a locker room if if you're, you know, taking job, guys' jobs away from getting injured. And so I just, I think it's he's going to get an opportunity to come back now. I mean, again, if we saw some turnover issues in the first and second weeks on the road, mind you, but if he comes back and there are a couple of, you know, stalled drives or, or some turnovers, maybe there is a case where you put Harburg in and let him see what he can do with the offense if, if you need to get something going. But, um, yeah, I just I think that if it's it, Jeff won the job, it's Jeff's job. And until he, you know, they he forces their hand to make a move. Otherwise, they're going to continue to let him go. He's just he he's the guy that this offense was really built around and that they spent all fall camp scheming and, and building the playbook around. And now, yes, you have a quarterback in Heinrich Harburg that you feel like could come in and run the same offense. But let's face it, a, a lot of what this was built for was built for Jeff Sims. Right, no doubt. Now, while we're focused on the Husker quarterbacks, there is a quarterback issue at La Tech. They, uh, Hank Bach Bachmeyer, who was a Boise State transfer, he had a really good career at Boise State. I'm a little... Not sure why you leave Boise State for Louisiana Tech, but he did. He got hurt in the third quarter of their game last week, so they went with their backup, Jack Turner, who nearly rallied them to a win. They were down 17. Turner, who's more of a runner than Bachmeyer, who throws, came in, and they tied that game up and then uh, lost on a last-second field goal. Uh, in, well, there's the why right week. there. He throws and playing for Sonny Cumbie, who throws the football. Correct. Like, if you are a quarterback that – likes to air it out and spin it, then Sonny Cumbie's a, a kind of yeah. guy that you want to play for. So we're not sure which quarterback we're going to see, and they're totally different. I mean, Turner, who did rally them late, runs the football more. He's 6'5". He's a little bit like Heinrich. He's 6'5", 230. So we'll, we'll see who they come out at quarterback. That'll be something interesting to see in the warm-ups on Saturday for both teams, what's the quarterback situation look like. So we really haven't talked much about Louisiana Tech during the week, but – uh, they may have a quarterback switch this week uh, in their game. So we'll look forward to that. So clips from the coach coming up here in a few minutes. Also, Jessica has been doing a series of podcasts looking back at the 100-year anniversary of Memorial Stadium. We will look back at what was termed the Halloween Massacre, the 92 Husker matchup with the Colorado Buffaloes. We'll play a snippet of that podcast coming up later on in the hour. And, hey, it's Thursday night. Joke of joke the of, week. Joke of the week. Big buildup. So <laughs> Cole has been practicing all day to deliver that coming your way later tonight. Did he run this by Camden? I feel like there's certain interns that do a better job of prepping him for his for his big night. Camden, have you been given the heads up on this one? Yes, I have. Okay. Is it a goodie? It, it's pretty good. <laughs> okay. I don't, you so. kind of hesitated a little bit. <laughs> I don't know about that. There was a slight little hesitation. You slight <laughs> pause. In the response to that. So, yeah, so we'll have that for you. And we want to hear from you tonight as well, 402 413 2400. Uh, Camden mentioned this as well in the ticker. Congratulations to John Walker and the Husker soccer team. They go to Columbus and beat Ohio State 2 to 1. They led 1 0 most of the match in the 78th minute. The Buckeyes tie it. And then the Huskers came right back two, three minutes later. And Sarah Weber had two goals tonight. So, big road win for them. They continue this fun year. How does does the soccer committee, is it kind of an RPI type it system? Is RPI. So, this road, road win will bode well for them. Absolutely. Road, road wins are better than home wins. They really are. Yeah. 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 Even though you get three points for wins either where you get them, Road wins in the eyes of the committee is something that they will. Is it like exactly? Is it like exactly RPI system? So pretty much, yeah. They don't use the net that basketball does. They yeah. still, in, in like the ball bat sports, use the RPI. So this so is huge. This, this is, is a big, big win, especially because you you're going back to Penn State. Well, who's really good? Yeah, they're ranked in the top ten, I believe, yeah. still. So that's a tough one. So the you split the weekend. That's a huge win for this team. Absolutely. So this road trip, which is they played, they usually go soccer. Usually goes and does. A two like volleyball does a two you do two you play two matches on one swing 
And so they get a win. And so if you go and you can't, and we hope they win at Penn yeah, State. Yeah, I should say, but, I'm not counting them out. I'm right. just saying. But you at least have one in your it's bank. It's a tough task, but yeah. you you feel really good if you, because it's, it's on yeah. the road and a top 10 team. If you did drop that one, it, it doesn't hurt your RPA. Right. And the, you split the weekend with the Friday night win. So congratulations again, Sarah Weber, who's a terrific player in her own right. She's really kind of been lost in the Eleanor Dale onslaught of goals this year, but she's a terrific player. She All had Big both, Ten both player goals. last year yeah. and local kid. I mean, she she is a star, too. So a heck of a win for them. They win 2-1. That I it was on BTN. I was sitting in here watching that toward the end of the volleyball show and really enjoying that. So we have a full hour coming your way tonight. In fact, let's uh, start it off with a phone call. Let's go to Omaha. And Mark, good evening. Mark, welcome to the program. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Good evening, both of you. I, 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 I hope it's not morning, Mark. I've had a long day. Well, either you'd be leaving or coming in. Hey, right. this, que this question is just for uh, Jesse. Um, I've, I've been watching a lot of the YouTube. I watch all these. And your, your interview is really is, is spot on this, this year. Uh, I wanted to ask you, where, where are you originally from? Uh, where did you grow up? How did you end up in Lincoln? And the last thing, by the features of your face, are you Bohemian or German? Hey, have a good evening. What a lot in there. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate that about the, the comment about the interviews. I appreciate that. I'm from Oklahoma, grew up in Oklahoma, and moved around but graduated from a small school outside of Lawton called Chattanooga. Graduated with 18 people in my graduating class. We did not have high school football. We played uh, baseball in the fall and the spring. So I had to learn uh, football once I got into college. But um, I worked at OU. And when we moved the network in-house, an uh, opportunity came. And I have loved every second of it. So, And I think, I don't know, I'm, I've got a lot in me. Um, my... Dad said the family has Native American, which a lot of people that are sure. from Oklahoma do. And I, I think German, some German. I think I've got a, a lot. I've got Scottish on my mother's side and German on my father's side. So you may have to do some uh, Ancestry.com. You know, I thought about doing that. I have a, a good friend that did it, and it's fascinating. Yeah. And so it'd be, it'd be cool. But I do know on my dad's side there is, I mean, pretty much everybody in Oklahoma because of, uh, you know, the Trail of Tears and, and the Indian Territory that... Most, most Oklahomans do have some. Mark, appreciate the phone call. He dials up on our Woodhouse Auto Family Sports Nightly Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll hear some clips from today's press conference with the head football coach. Last time we'll hear from him until game, the kickoff Saturday afternoon against Louisiana Tech. That's coming up next. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Here's to the locals, raised right here in the Western Corn Belt. The strong ones. We help them grow stronger, making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy. The shake -em up yields. Because we're born and raised here, too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best at Hogemeyer. Raised local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. I'm Ty Burrell, actor and small business owner. I'm going to show you my steps for making the perfect radio ad. This one's about innovation refunds and the ERC. First step, be relatable. I like pizza and puppies. Two, cold hard info. The ERC is a tax credit for eligible businesses that kept employees on payroll in 2020 and 2021. So if you qualify, Innovation Refunds Network of Independent Tax Attorneys could help you claim it. Three, go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS. Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. 
Experience a redefined car buying process when you shop at Genesis of Southwest Omaha. Our seasoned team provides exceptional customer service with personalized attention, expert advice and knowledge on vehicles you're interested in, and a streamlined purchasing experience. Shop our full lineup today and test drive the thrilling 2023 Genesis G70. This fierce and powerful sedan pushes limits with exhilarating capabilities and four available powertrains to choose from. Visit us in store or online at southwestomahagenesis.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Nothing goes better with Husker sports than Fairbury. Fairbury premium quality hot dogs deliver the home game experience to your family and friends. The highest quality beef, pork, and natural spices give you the best tasting hot dog and your hometown favorite Big Red hot dog. Look for Fairbury hot dogs all year long at your local grocery store. Fairbury, the official hot dog of the Huskers and Nebraska fans everywhere. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Did you know that Lincoln's water is four times more hard than what is recommended? This will shorten the life of your water heater, harm pipes through mineral buildup, and is bad for your hair, skin, and clothes. What's the solution? A water softener. Go online to jhlincoln.com to learn more about water softeners and our flexible financing offers, or call John Henry's. 435-5555. John Henry's Plumbing. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates may apply and may vary by carrier. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a very big mistake. Hey, Joe, you think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have your underground utilities parked before you start digging? John, that's just for big projects. <laughs> Actually, it's for any digging project. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe. You found your electric line. Remember, safe digging always begins with a free call to 811. You want to borrow my phone, buddy? Brought to you by Nebraska 811. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Thursday night. Again, tomorrow, just an hour show ahead of Husker Volleyball pregame. It starts at 7. Uh, first server from the Devaney Center is at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. The head coach met with the media earlier today, the last time to talk to the media before kickoff on Saturday. Time for us to give you tonight's practice report. The 1890 Initiative presents the Nebraska Football Practice Report. We're talking about practice. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. So the head coach came off a of practice field today. Camden played for you the clip that said Jeff's had a good week, did pretty much everything they asked, uh, but he would not commit yet on who was going to be take the first snap in Saturday's game at that position. The other thing they've been dealing with this week is obviously the loss of Gabe and Ramir from the running back spot. So how about getting the running backs ready to play on Saturday? That's been a lot of work. EJ's been working overtime. Um, 
you know, um, um, you know, Anthony, Anthony, you know, and Emmett obviously have been in it for a while. Quentin's been, you know, he's he's in the meetings, but he's been on the scout team, you know, reading cards. So he's got some work to do to catch up. We anticipate Louisiana Tech being a high blitz team. They're a high third down pressure team. So um, obviously we have a running quarterback, so you you can do some things in the run game, even on third down to offset pressures. But at some point you're going to have to stand in there and pick up blitzes and exotic pressures. They have a great blitz package. So um, it's been overtime work on that. Um, so there's a lot of things that we know we're doing, but they, they've had a good week. And um, um, we'll, you know, whoever's ready to go, there's a standard to play to. I expect them to play to that standard. It's going to be fascinating to see how the playbook is different now with that lack of depth because you know you, you felt really good about hey you know continuing to go through if, if somebody gets tired or if you need them for for any given thing and then also just with Gabe and Ramir they're they were so seasoned and played so much football that they were able to stand back there in that pass protection or pick up blitzes and you just you, it's one of the biggest things with freshman running backs is how can they do that in that area it's it's always kind of a a work in progress, uh, so to speak, for those young guys on on that part of it. They can all they can run the football and and you know they're talented. They're here for a reason. That's why they got here. But it's some of the other things that go along with right. playing running back that sometimes take a little bit for a freshman to grasp. I think we'll miss Ramir more than Gabe, because Anthony can can do a lot of the stuff Gabe does, uh, and there's probably very little difference between their talent level. To me, the pressure's on Emmett because he's got to kind of fill the shoes of Ramir, who was good at picking up blitzes, who can slip out and catch passes. I think Emmett can do all that, but he hasn't been asked to do it yet. Yeah, and he's a smart, smart kid, lots of talent, and, and I know that they are really high on him, but he just has not been in that situation and yet. And even last year, you know, listening in on the sideline, that was still that was something that Anthony Grant had to be work on and get better at. It's just so different when you go get into the Big Ten and having to, to pick those up in, against Big Ten defenses and, and picking up those blitzes and all of that. Like, you know, there were times that he, he you know, the offensive line got blamed for it, but sometimes, you know, the running backs weren't always where they needed to be or, or picking up things that they needed to pick up. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think Anthony's gotten a, a lot better. He's really developed at that, but, you know, you just, you don't know what you don't know until right. those guys get thrown to the fire. So we'll see how those guys handle it. And Quinton's been with the scout team. Because you're like, he's not going to play. We're going to redshirt him. He might get a game or two here or there. But so now he's coming up and having to learn all this. To, I'm sure he's swimming in it this week. I will say I saw him in pads when he was going through the recruiting process. That's a guy that does not look like a freshman running back. I'll tell you that. He looks like a linebacker. He's a big kid. And so he's physical. And hopefully, you know, again, he will embrace the challenge. He's a competitor. He played high school basketball, Was is an elite athlete. So hopefully he's a... Uh, Hey, it's my time. Yeah. Let's see what I can do with it. All right. This is the last non-conference game. So the question to Coach Whirl here was about, are you using this to kind of tune yourself up or something for conference games? What do you want to work on before you jump into the league? Coach, I don't think love the question. Just listen in. Yeah, I, I, I won't let my I, – I would, I would never speak that or think that. Um, you know, I reminded the team last night at practice – um, what would they what would they would do to go back and practice better the Wednesday before Georgia, Georgia Southern? Um, you know, we've already let our game that we thought we could win should have won slip through our hands, right? So we've already had that game. So we have to play our best football game every week. I challenge the team two things: go one and zero this week, win the game, and number two to improve, right? So we had a lot of things that we did wrong last week that no one notices because we won, but. We have to have the same urgency that we had after Colorado. When, hey, you know, we're not, we lost because we're not doing X, Y, and Z right. Well, X, Y, and Z are still happening, or they might be different X, Y, and Zs. So um, we have to improve every week. And uh, this team, can, this team, this Louisiana Tech team, can absolutely beat you. Um, they're talented. They're dynamic. They're a much different offense than, than like the offense we faced last week. Um, so Sunny, Sunny, Sunny knows how to score points. So they're going to come in. They're come after our defense, and our offense has to, our offense has to step up and and and, and play. Um, at a level that allows us to win. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying earlier about that quarterback. I mean, he's from the air raid, and so they put up the points, and they can put him up in a hurry. So you have to always be ready for that. And and not saying that this defense isn't up for the challenge, but it's a different kind of look. Right. I mean, I know Colorado puts up points, but an air raid is always so difficult to defend, especially when you haven't seen it. And um, I, I sat down with Nash for the Cornhusker conversation, and he said that. He mentioned that about how – these coaches have been the same every week, and they came in with a long list of things that they needed to improve on and that they didn't do well, even if they did win. So as much as 
we celebrate the win and, and pick out all the good things. They are doing the exact same. They're approaching it the exact same way. Hey, there are a lot of things that we got to get better at. Wet weather. We may be looking at some rain Saturday. The forecast gives a pretty good chance of some rain, maybe even some thunderstorms. Let's hope that doesn't happen. So what did the team do this week to prepare to play with maybe some rain in, in during the game? Yeah, Jay, uh, Jay came up to me on Tuesday, and so we did it last night. You know, we practiced Wednesdays. We practiced half on the fields out here, half in the stadium. Um, so, um, you know, we, we did some wet football stuff last night. You know, luckily for us, you guys know us, like we don't go inside in camp during the rain. So in training camp, we don't go inside in the spring. We don't use the indoor facility unless we absolutely have to. You know, doctor comes in and says it's too hot. You have to go in the indoor. Otherwise, we're outside because um, we play outside. So we've gotten lots of reps in the rain. Um, got lots of reps this week during a wet ball drill. And, um, you know, the great thing about being at the University of Nebraska is, you know, you know everyone's going to show up no matter what, you know. And um, for me, um, you know, um, I think about, I think about, you know, I think about all the people coming and sitting in the stands. I think about your family and friends, my family and friends, everybody going out there. Like, you know, we, they can't come and have us bumble the ball around because it's wet. Like, there's a standard. We have to play in a way that's, as Coach Osborne would say, is pleasing to the fans. And, um, you know, like it was reminded me by, by a former player last night, George Kairos, like I, there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of people all across the state that are working hard. that can't come to the game. There's a bunch of farmers, you know, sitting in their cabs, <laughs> working on fields. They're going to be listening to that game. Um, so um, we have to play to a standard and we have to be we have to show our gratitude and thanks. And so I'm thankful for all the people of the state and everything that they do. So we have to play well. So. You, know, you can kind of hear in my voice, like I'm trying to make sure our guys understand, like there is no excuse for not playing Nebraska football. And so we hear a lot of excuses. We hear, you know, when I said, you, you can hear them if you want to, like, ah, well, I'm, I'm a little banged up. We're a little banged up. We're a little tired. We've been through a lot. Who cares? You know, this is what it means to be a corn Oscar. Um, so this is an amazing opportunity. So I welcome the rain. I prepared, I prepared all camp in the rain saying, hey guys, when it rains, you better go out there and be like, hey, we, we do this all the time. So. And that's why we did mat drills in the snow. Um, I hope it's a messy, ugly day because it gives us a chance to overcome, show what we can do. Oh, I love it. What a fantastic sound bite. Wasn't that great? Yeah, that was that was a, a preach. Yes. Preach, Coach yes. Rule. And that, he almost wants it to happen, I think. He's kind of like, if that happens, we'll take care of business. Well, because I think it also, I mean, and you mentioned this earlier in the week, it kind of bodes well for the Huskers I if agree. that's what, I agree. What, what the weather is. But anything and everything any kind of adversity and and they do such a good job at the messaging of of you know rallying guys together no matter what the adversity is they like when that happens i mean they don't want it to happen but they they embrace it when it happens because it, it it's an opportunity to bring a team closer together and to bond in a way that you you don't get you can't you can't fake rain i mean i you can in the during fall camp but like a winning a football game in the rain you know, that here's an opportunity to bring a team together in a way. And, and most of the time, I'm telling you, I've done this now for over a decade covering football. Guys, when weather happens, they they love it. They yeah. love it. It's like backyard football when they're growing up, playing in the rain. And so most of the time, they embrace it. It fires them up. And so if that's the case, I, I expect the Huskers to, to full on embrace whatever challenge that might bring. Cool stuff. Let's head. Uh, let's head to the phones. We'll go to our next break. Let's go to Omaha. Doc Rock, you're up. What's happening? Jessica, Mr. Sharp, go be grand. How we do tonight? Were we just saying he hadn't called in a while? Yeah, I've been missing him. <laughs> well, here I am. Good to be here. Say, so, listen. Um, penalties. You know, uh, coach was talking about what's pleasing to the fans. Well, you know, sportsmanlike conduct penalty or personal foul. I just hope we see a game without one of those. You've seen the movie uh, Alien, right? When they have one of those penalties, you ought to see my face. My face splits down the middle. It rips, like peels off the cheeks, and an alien comes out. It's not pretty. So please, can we see one of the games without, uh, without those uh, types of penalties? But looking forward to the game. Uh, immensely glad that, you know, everybody's getting reps. Talked about that uh, early on. Uh, team's going in the right direction, I, I think, and uh, whoever starts, Sims or Harburg, I think either of them have a, a great opportunity to show what they could do. They're both uh, exceptional ap athletes and uh, really love our defense. I mean, how can you not like the direction of this defense, especially this early in the season with the new uh, defensive coordinator, 335 uh, 
defense. So I say that right? Yeah. You did? No. Three, uh, three, three, five. Three, yep. Three, five. Okay. <laughs> That's new. Still getting used to it. But yeah, go big red. And uh, some youngsters are going to have a chance to show what they can do this weekend. Looking forward to Grant getting the start at uh, at running back. So let's go and let's get a win. Another opportunity. Let's go one and all. You bet. Doc, appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Yeah, great opportunity for guys. You know, you feel awful for Gabe, and he coached talked in the press conference today, but he got pretty emotional when he had to tell the team that Ramirez was done because he, I think, was really, really fond of Ramirez. And so, but it's a chance. Here's Emmett's time. And I saw Emmett today, and I told him, you're prepared. You've worked hard to get to this. Now go do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw him yesterday, and same thing. I mean, I, I've said this since we the day that he signed that, you know, I've I've been one of the – presidents of, of Emmett Johnson's fan club and he's he's going to be ready he will be ready and he is excited for this opportunity he, he talked a lot about just you know when this new coaching staff came and and getting this opportunity in the clean slate which we heard Heiner Carberg say you know right. and and how how much they didn't even I mean yes they watched the film and and you know evaluated what the guys did before but it was a clean slate and you got a good, different opportunity here and so I know Emmett's loves with this co- coaching staff loves working with EJ Barthel. So I have, I, and we've seen what Anthony Grant can do. So, you know, I, I, I'm excited to see what Emmett Johnson does with this opportunity. He's waited his time. He's been a young guy with a lot of older guys in front of him. So here's your opportunity. What are you going to do with it? Fella? Absolutely. Folks buckle up, put the phone down a reminder from the NDOT highway safety office. When we come back, we'll play one of the latest podcasts about the 100th year of Memorial stadium. A look back at the Halloween massacre. That's coming up next. There's room at the table, saving you money on every gallon at a CVA fuel site. Central Valley Ag offers a five cent per gallon discount at the pump to CVA fuel card holders. Now, for a limited time, get a five cent discount and be entered to win two VIP tickets to a Husker football game when you get a new or additional CVA fuel card. Sign up to win at CVAcoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Day by Day is the new documentary about Tom Osborne and the Nebraska Cornhuskers' decade-long pursuit of a national championship. Featuring interviews with former players and coaches, as well as famous fans like Peyton and Archie Manning, Larry the Cable Guy, and numerous NCAA and NFL legends. Day by Day is the riveting, untold story of one of the most dominant, celebrated, and controversial football teams ever. Now available on demand. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. 
and tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. What's colder than the coldest? A polar bear. Five reports of polar bear on the loose. Ma'am, is it cold enough for a polar bear in here? Yes, we use SOS. Come on in. SOS to the rescue! S Nebraska defense lineman Nash Hubbard here. People know me as the polar bear, and when I want to stay cool, I call SOS. The techs don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than the competition, guaranteed. Mention the polar bear and get a free 10-year labor warranty on New York equipment. The best warranty you have. Beardmore Subaru celebrates Nebraska volleyball again this season. Five national championships, 47 All-Americans, and a home sellout streak dating back to 2001. The longest streak for any women's sport in NCAA history. Beardmore Subaru has been a proud supporter of Husker volleyball for more than 10 years. Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue has the new Subaru Outback Wilderness. Loaded with off-road ready upgrades and the new Solterra, Subaru's first ever all-electric and all-wheel drive vehicle. Go Big Red. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Thursday night. Hope you enjoyed the volleyball show last hour. Jessica's been working over the last month or so on putting together podcasts, looking back at the 100 years of great games inside Memorial Stadium. And boy, did you find a good one back in the early 90s. The Halloween Massacre, October 31st, 1992. Colorado came in with a 25-game Big 8 conference win streak. Nebraska hadn't beaten Colorado since 1988. They hadn't had a top 10 win since 1988. So this is a good one. This was a fun one. I, I was able to sit down with the AD, Trev Elbert, too. I mean, I watched the film on this one. He blew me away. He was in the backfield all day long. And then Ron Brown, who was a coach on staff. So here is a portion of that podcast looking back at the Halloween massacre in 1992. You know, we didn't even have permanent lights here. So I just remember um, a lot of hype around the game. We were both top 10 programs. You know, it was, you know, it was Halloween. Um, and then during the week, they started like strolling in these massive lights and you could just, it just, you know, Jessica, just, you could just feel it building up like this must be a really big deal. Cause back in those days you didn't play night games. I mean, it was not, I'm not saying we never did, but you had to rent. I mean, it had to be a big enough deal to spend the money to go rent temporary lights to play at night. Colorado had moved from a smash mouth ground attack to more of an air it out style of offense. And from the first pass, the black shirts were ready for it, making it a very long day for Colorado quarterback Corey Detmer. The very first play of the game, Detmer's pass tipped into the hands of Travis Hill. Nebraska would capitalize on the turnover on Calvin Jones first touchdown of the day. 7-0, Nebraska would take the lead with just over a minute off the clock in the first quarter. It would remain 7-0 through the first and on the Huskers' first offensive possession of the second quarter. The first play was a handoff to Jones, who found room on the outside 47 yards and in for his second score as Nebraska took a 14-0 lead. But yeah, Calvin, he, he got so excited that um, I think he may have fumbled before he crossed the goal line. Um, thankfully, we didn't have instant replay in those days, and thankfully, we didn't have the 15-yard penalty if you took your helmet off because Calvin got his helmet off fast a couple times. But uh, just a couple counterplays, simple counterplays, uh, great, 
you know, offside guard and tackle pulling around, great blocking downfield by the wide receivers, and um, just you know, a couple of those runs answered some Colorado momentum and really just kind of, I think, you know, we always talked about when um, when you have a chance where a team is kind of on the verge of wilting, you have to be able to shut the door on them, and, and a couple of Calvin's runs were, were in that mode. Calvin was a big play guy, boy, I tell you, he... Uh, he ran the ball really well. He had a great season. Um, we knew we had a great player in him, but we, our eye back, the, the, the eye backs that we had were all big time guys, really good players. I think the key to our football team was just the fact that we were, the mindset was, we're going to out tough you. We're going to smack you and, and hit you. We hadn't won a national championship yet, but we were moving in that direction because before we were going to be a national championship team, we were going to be the most physical team in college football. And that's just the way our system worked, and certainly it showed up that night. In the third quarter, yet another Detmer interception. This one hauled in by Mike Anderson would lead to Tommy Frazier's first passing touchdown to Gerald Armstrong. His second, a 48-yard deep pass to Corey Dixon. The freshman quarterback also accounting for 86 rushing yards of the 373 total that the Nebraska offense racked up on the ground that day. You know, Tommy, what, what he brought to the team was a confidence and swagger. And even as a freshman, you know, there was a couple times you know, it looked like uh, Dion figures or somebody had a massive hit on him. The reality was we played on AstroTurf. It was misty, and uh, Tommy slipped a couple times, but, you know, wasn't afraid to get, get in the face. Uh, never did anything. He didn't get 15-yard penalties, but he wasn't going to be intimidated by anybody, and that started when he was a true freshman. So that really kind of sets the tone when your leader and the guy on offense who's, who's carrying the ball all the time has extreme confidence in himself and isn't rattled by a really physical. I mean, you, you look at their defense. I mean, they had five or six NFL players that played substantial amount of time, uh, great players, and uh, Tommy, Tommy took it to them. He probably had as much confidence as any true freshman I've ever seen here. When he took over, he took over. I mean, it wasn't any – I remember the first day in the huddle as his freshman year uh, in practice, uh, it was kind of noisy. And I think people, you know, probably had a little slight disrespect for him. Who is this big-time guy, blah, blah, blah. And he said, shut up. I'm the quarterback. When I'm in the huddle, nobody else talks. And he got real silent. And for the rest of the time, every single time he stepped in that huddle, that's the kind of culture it was. It was quiet. Everybody was listening. Everybody knew who the leader was. It was Tommy Frazier. And he led. He was a, he was a very courageous leader. The Nebraska defense was just suffocating. An ESPN graphic in the fourth quarter displayed the stats from the Black Shirts past defense. Five sacks, 12 knockdowns, four hurries, two block passes, three interceptions and the Buffaloes managing just eight rushing yards the entire game. I don't think anybody thought going into that game that that it would end up that way but um, we always would play you know two or three games at the start of the season generally non-conference games and we tried to get a lot of guys into the game and so as you got to a point later in your career as a junior senior if you were starter or black shirt you know the goal was always to be because we were always so hungry Unlike these young men today who seem like they have unlimited food, right? There's this nutrition. The old school philosophy was you, you couldn't eat too much because it would make you lethargic or slow. So, you know, George Sullivan, our old athletic trainer who's in charge of all the food, kind of limited the amount of calories we had prior to games. So we were just starving. And we took great pride in, in the fourth quarter, if you were sitting on the bench with your tape off, your gloves off, and maybe you could steal a Runza or one of those hot dogs, then you knew. And I just remember sitting on the bench, looking up, I'm eating a hot dog against Colorado, a top 10 team, pretty early in the fourth quarter, thinking to myself, that's how I knew that we had a great game. Nobody would have ever predicted that we'd have the tape off, you're done playing as a defense, against Colorado early in the fourth quarter and having an opportunity to get one of those hot dogs on the sideline. That, that, that was what the shock was. And I, I just, I will always remember that. I can't believe that we have dominated them to that level that I'm done. Don't even have to play the rest of the game. Got three, three and a half quarters in and I'm getting a hot dog over here. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's amazing. What a great story. <laughs> when the clock ticked down to zero and with the scoreboard display of 52 to seven, 
Fans rushed the field and down came the goalposts as the Huskers knocked off a top 10 team for the first time since 1988. The Huskers would go on to win the Big 8 title and earn a berth in the Orange Bowl. The Halloween Massacre in 1992, a launching point for what was to come of Husker football dominance in the 1990s. I remember us beating up on them really well that night and a confidence booster. There was something about the 92 season that even the bowl game that year that we played in, we were much closer. We lost to Florida State that year, but we were much closer. You could see there was something different about us. We had won the big eight conference. Uh, yeah, they, we, we, we hadn't arrived yet, but we were on the verge of it. And the bowl game proved that we were getting closer to the national powerhouses. And that's part of our challenge, right? I mean, we've had a taste of what that feels like, and it felt so good. I mean, it just, you know, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, just the pent-up emotion that was built up over time based on our previous struggles. And not just the struggles against Colorado, but there was a larger picture here. I mean, we had had some just consistent struggles against bigger teams and ranked teams. And so to just kind of let it all out, it, was just, it wasn't just our team. It was our entire state. It was our fan base, this collective. And it really carried to the next week because a lot of people forget the next week we played also another top 10 team in Kansas the following week, also on national television. And uh, we dominated them about the same way. So the momentum from this game uh, I think was a real turning point, not just for the season, but – you know, it, it started, you know, the next game then we, we really dominated Kansas. And and while we lost to Florida State, um, I think it was 28 to 14 in the Orange Bowl, the tide started shifting a little bit. You know, we started, we had more speed. There was a belief. There was some confidence. Anything else from that game I should make sure and include in this? Any stories? or? I, I, I can neither confirm or deny, but I'm, I'm somewhat – confident that portions of the goalpost I saw later that evening but I cannot confirm or deny that or confirm or deny where the location of it was but I may have seen some of the goalpost later that evening oh I love it that's great <laughs> oh that was so fun so fun to get to do that and that is just a portion oh. of the podcast so you can listen to the full podcast that will drop first thing tomorrow morning on our podcast platform. That is gold right <laughs> know, there. Right? Just gold. Eating a hot dog in the fourth quarter, seeing the goal post, and then the Tommy Tommy Frazier story from Ron Brown. I mean, there's so many just like golden nuggets that I was like, this is this is great. I, like, it was so entertaining for me to get to do that. I had a lot of fun, so make sure you check it out first thing tomorrow morning. Tommy was down by the uh, media room after the game the other night. So sorry. For as much as he was not liked as a player, he is so nice now. He might be the most popular Husker ever. I Might mean, be. he is like so kind People and friendly. People love Tommy. They yeah. love him. They love Tommy. Now all that is brought to you by Woodhouse. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner with 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We can still call this off. <laughs> no, all we right. can't now. Cole's joke of the week coming up. <laughs> Innovation Refunds does not provide tax or legal advice. We work with an independent network of tax professionals and will share information with them to evaluate and process your claims. Terms and conditions apply. Ty is a paid spokesman. I'm Ty Burrell, actor and small business owner. You can trust Innovation Refunds with your small business's ERC claim because of their SOC 2 Type 1 security compliance. Without this, how can you be sure a company can protect your information? It's not like here on the radio where all you need to be secure is a sensor button. My password to my bank account is Ty's cool password 1. Uh-oh. Luckily, Innovation Refunds is more reliable. Go to innovationrefunds.com or call 1-843-REFUNDS to get started. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. We could tell you all about what makes Ford F-Series the number one trucks in America for 46 straight years. But why tell you when we could show you instead? Because in the Midwest, talk is cheap and actions speak. 
on the lake, on the job, or on the town. Choose the trucks that deliver on the claims. Ford F-Series is made for the real world. This is Chief's Kingdom. Get 3.9% financing for 66 months, plus up to 37.50 bonus cash on F-150 XLT, official truck of the Kansas City Chiefs. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Final few minutes, Thursday night show here on Sports Nightly. Mike in Lakeside, Nebraska, on our text line said, I was on I-80 <laughs> between Laramie and Cheyenne when that Colorado game kicked off, so I had to listen to the Colorado broadcast on KOA. That would have been Larry Zimmer, I believe, calling those games for CU then. It was great. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, but they were just... Ooh. Debbie Downer is the whole time, and another interception, well, and another interception. When and you're top five, and they were top five, you don't expect to get rolled like that. They hadn't been beat in 25 games. Right. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Well, um, we got a good winning streak going for Cole. Let's see if we can keep it's it going tonight. It's time. You've won two are. in a row, I feel we like. Might, we need to build an open for this. Well, yeah, we do. We should. We but should. I, put that on your to-do list. You don't Mine. have much. Build your own that open. That to-do list is shrinking, so you need some stuff <laughs> Do I have to voice it? Or can we <laughs> no, no. Get Russ, or you get the big voice guy Let's or see, Or ask one of the interns. Hey, do you guys remember the Flintstones? Yes. Yes. Well, apparently the people of Qatar don't like the Flintstones, but the people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I told you it was dumb. <laughs> I warned you. Oh. oh, goodness. Yep. Hey, that's probably my third favorite of the last well, there year. Flintstones. There we go. The Flintstones. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Have a yabba dabba do <laughs> time. <laughs> I, I'm okay with that one. I, you were kind of, you were sauntering over here and worried about this, but I think that one was okay. I would give that a Thank solid you. seven. All right. Which solid I, if that's seven. winning, right? That is For winning. For you? Okay, yep, let's, see what, let's see what oh. the. Anything above like. The, the early four. results are coming in, Jessica. They are. Cole, you get a perfect 10 for effort and 8 for delivery. Overall, 9. Dry says 8. Four hours to Lincoln, that, That's nine. Ethan. He says 9. Doug and Norfolk on the text line, a 10 <laughs> plus. Woo! That's a perfect score. We Wonderful. can't give out perfect scores. People. Husker Wonderful. in Hanover said, great dumb joke, Cole. That's an 8. <laughs> Art in Los Angeles giving a C. Still thinks you should let it be. So he, he's, been, he's, he's been a tough critic on you. Well, he's stuck on the B. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. stuck in the past. So yeah. man, this is a this is a good score tonight. Eight and a half. Nice. Okay. Well done. Thanks. Um, it's, thanks, guys. It's pretty solid. Thank you. I feel like your delivery is really like up in the up in the point total for you. Has it gotten better? The yes. delivery. Yeah. The, yes, the it really has. You, you kind of like lead us into it. You build us up a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Till next week. <laughs> Carla, adorable. Nine. Tim in Minnesota, nine with a thumbs up emoji. Oh, Dennis snap. Old, Dennis a little little rougher, six and a half out of Dennis. Um, that's, <laughs> that's it's kind of crazy that that's been like a, one of the favorites over the last few weeks. How about that? How about I mean, that? It was, it was pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Tomorrow night, just an hour, we'll lead you up to volleyball coverage tomorrow night. We have picked 10 picks to make. And we'll talk about the chat room, how they did last week too, right? Yes, right. I got the I got the results, okay. so we'll try to deliver the. This is going to be a harder week. Yeah, there's, there's some, a lot there, of good games. There's some toss-up Finally, games. this yes. past week was terrible. Yes, so I don't know how Jeremiah will handle a tougher slate because he hasn't handled the layup weeks very well. Did you deliver uh, the Carla? One yeah, of our favorites? adorable. Okay. Yeah. All right, Camden, well done. Cole, you nailed it. Good job tonight. Thanks, everybody, for being a part of this hour. And to John and John taking care of hour one for us tonight. We're back with just an hour tomorrow before then a ranked matchup, Husker Volleyball against the Ohio State Buckeyes. You all have a great night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hi, Husker Nation. This is Jim Baldonado with The Home Agency. It's been a stormy summer, but that's why we do what we do. Whether auto, home, crop, farm, or commercial coverage, our agents shine when it comes to providing you with the best coverage and customer service after the sale. Our passion is keeping you protected so you can do more of what you love, like cheering on the Huskers. Give us a call today. Call home, the home agency that is, at 1-800-245-4241. That's 1-800-245-4241. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe health care should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. As a fan, you wear your jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. There's a place for people like you. The Cox Fan Zone. Play NFL Pick'em and Collegiate Pick'em for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card each week or even a $500 Visa gift card grand prize. Hey, Oscar fans, this is Greg Sharp. Say Fan Zone in your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home.